All right, start streaming. All right, Mark is here, and we are going to talk about the real technician guide to passing these Apple certifications. So what's up with the Apple certifications? Uh, we did a video last class that was kind of a joke about, hey, wouldn't it be fun if, if uh, Jessa and Mark take these Apple certifications? Um, but we did. We took it and we passed. So it's pretty fun. I got my, um, hey, you've been authorized. Would you like to print out your certificate? Which is, I was filling that out today. I'm going to hang it in the shop. I changed the website to say Apple Certified Unauthorized Repair. And it's actually been really helpful. I really like being able to kind of point to the sign on the wall and be able to say, hey, you know, I'm an Apple Certified Technician. And I think that for the right to repair stuff, that it's really a strong thing to be able to say, hey, I can pass your certification. So therefore, I want you to give me access to parts, fair access to parts. I'm an Apple Certified Technician. So um, I'd like to see more of us in the industry try to pass these certifications. And um, it's timely because we've been talking about this battery service issue all week. And um, I had a chat with Lewis Rossman in my last stream. We kind of had a debate about this stuff where my feeling is that on this one issue, I really don't expect Apple to do more than they're already doing. They are allowing you to use whatever battery you want. They're just not going to vouch for whatever fake battery that you put in there. They're just not going to do that. And I think when we look at how Apple views battery safety and we kind of look at it from their perspective, then I think it might make a lot of sense why they wouldn't bother to program iOS to query the gas gauge on some random eBay battery and report that. So when you're taking those certifications, the thing that really is starting to get a lot of people is you have to be able to pass all of the battery safety questions, or I think maybe eight out of 10. Can't get those wrong. You can get other stuff wrong, but you gotta get these battery safety. So I don't think that it's unsafe to use, you know, random batteries, but I do think that we can have a little bit of fun as we look at what they think is safe. So uh, Mark is, is here with me. Mark is uh, gonna take his certification uh, probably tomorrow, but you're gonna uh, kind of help me review. Help me review my study guide and uh, tell me what you think I've left out. And uh, chat, you can tell me what I've left out as well. So this study guide is live right now on iPadRehab.com. So you can go to iPad Rehab. Um, iPad Rehab, just click iPadRehab.com. You can see our new splash here and down in blog articles here is our study guide. So this is our study guide. Now we're gonna update this as we go through this stream. So where do we start? Where do we get this information to begin with? And what I did is I started by just uh, doing a Google search for the word Atlas, which is Apple's encyclopedia of their internal information. Atlas battery iPhone. So that I could look up what are their rules. So I've got a, here we go, embedded battery safety. So somebody, Emily, 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 not me, Emily, has uh, copied and made screenshots of this really great battery information. So this is the Apple viewpoint on battery safety. So this is what the Apple certification is going to test on. So it's kind of fun to take the, ch the challenge. How do we translate this viewpoint into something that real technicians can actually uh, answer on test questions? And I had a lot of fun making the study guide. All right, so, all right, let's see, what do we have? So this is how I began the study guide. But I'm looking for anything that's not just what I would call common sense. You know, common, yeah. common sense. Mark, what are your personal viewpoints on battery safety? Um, don't puncture it. Don't puncture it. That's it. Done. <laughs> Real technician <laughs> viewpoint. Don't puncture the battery. Actually, I'll edit that to say don't puncture a battery that has charge in it. Um, and also disconnect it before you work on things. Yes, disconnect the battery before you work on the logic board. And that's pretty much it. To if I was going to do a certification, I would say, um, should you shove like big metal knives in the batteries? 
The answer would be no. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it. All right, so let's see what this says. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so it's telling us that, hey, we glued this stuff in here. You're welcome. It allows for lighter, thinner designs. Of course, you're going to have to throw them away when the battery runs out. So let's see. So they're kind of just telling us a little bit of basic boilerplate. And here we go. Here is kind of point number one that is going to feel weird to the real technicians. Uh, replacing a defective battery in your MacBook will require replacement of the entire case assembly. So according to Apple, absolutely not. No certified Apple technician has any business actually replacing you know just the battery so all of the stuff that we do where we get the batteries out and put in a new battery none of that none of that is okay never never attempt to separate or remove the battery from a case assembly that has a built-in battery got that mark yeah all right now do you think we should write that down in the study guide um i think i, mean, I, I think like i that's did gonna come up again Right. Um, yeah, here we go. Thou shalt not remove batteries from case assemblies and back books like a real technician. Instead, place the whole case. So that's oh, what I did. Piece. Yeah, I went through and, and made this whole thing. It's only like a couple of pages, pretty short. All right, what else do, do we have to say here? Um, use care when handling it. All right, here's one. All right, Mark. Which of the following is an appropriate way to handle an iPhone battery. Here, I'm gonna make it an example here. I'm gonna grab an iPhone battery. You'll notice that there's no paper around, so it's safe for me to do this while I'm on my Apple certified stream. All right, which, put that away. All right, we'll have this. Wait, I, I need to be two feet away from the, the sand. sand Lots of sand. Of? What's it made out of? It's made out of um, <laughs> official fire retardant so, so label. <laughs> it's, made out of, it's made out of pure natural cellulose <laughs> products. Okay, so I want you to tell me which, let me make sure I'm two, I have to be two feet, two feet. And it can't be above or below either, all right. Okay, which of the following is the safer way for me to handle this battery? A. Mark, would you like this battery? Let me go what? up and move this battery it's around. It's dangerous. I'm gonna put Jesus. this. I'm gonna put this battery in this iPhone later. A or B? Which one seems? Oh, that's much safer. Much safer. Much safer. Yes, much safer. If you're gonna handle a battery, you've got to use two hands. Two hands, just like catching a softball two hands because you might let go with one hand and then it could drop and if it drops now oh. what do you have to do jeez that you gotta throw that away this is now you have this, to this that is, whoops, is now the bomb <laughs> that's the <a> bomb <laughs> now that's damage that's right so if you ever drop a battery no matter how minor drop a battery so do that <laughs> <laughs> if you ever drop a battery then you have to replace it all right so handle the battery with two hands so i did have to write that down on the study guide and um do not lift it by the cable or connector that makes sense i don't think i would actually i wouldn't do that because i wouldn't want to tear up the gas gauge yeah yeah don't tear up my gas gauge you just hold it with two hands oh this is common sense don't puncture press bench press crush twist torque strike squeeze or who are the people that get to make that list of words <laughs> I'd like to see Mark's vote for what word do you think should be in that list that they left out? Never um, drop, never stack, never puncture, never press, never crush. Penetrate. <laughs> penetrate. Never pe penetration. It's fine. It's not in there. Can you penetrate? Yes, you can. Or apply unnecessary pressure to the actual battery. All right. Inspect it. And then, this is real funny, Mark. Inspect the battery for dents, scratches, or defects. And then you can go to the refer to the, to the, to the inspection rules. All right, now I've got a question for you, Mark, as you're in, in advance of taking your test here. Mm -hmm. Mark, are you, um, do you think that Apple has a five second rule for dropping the battery? 
Fair enough. <laughs> I'm going to guess that they don't. They don't? Okay. I think you're right. It wasn't mentioned. So if the exam asks you, um, is there a five-second rule you know, for dropping the battery, there is not any drop of the battery. It means you're going to have, it's a damaged battery, and you're going to have to replace it. All right. So here's what's fun. Mark, this is a serious question. You're going to have to get this right. Apple, it turns out, does allow, they do have provisions, that it is acceptable to have some amount of dents or scratches in the battery according to very specific rules and guidelines that you need to know. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised. I would have thought they would have had a strict no dent policy, mm -hmm. but they don't. And let's find out. So let's scroll down to the dent section. Uh, this is, I think this the might be my dent. favorite part, the scratch and dent, scratch and dent aisle here. <laughs> let's see. Here we go. Here we go in the dents. Ooh. Dents or dot imprints. And we've all seen this before, right? Now you got to count them up, right? You can have, mi I call these micro dots. You can have unlimited number of micro dots as long as they are about like a human hair. So less than half of a this millimeter. It's diameter, it's not depth. Well, the depth is also made clear. Important, the depth should not exceed a depth greater than half the diameter of the dent or imprint. Wow. I mean, okay. how could you put this like, how, like if I was writing this practical, you, know, you put a P, you put a grain of rice, and you put a speck and say, no, you got a lot of them, that's fine. You have two of these, you have to six of them. <laughs> so you can have 10 or less. Now let's make this practical. What, what is greater than half of a millimeter, but less than one millimeter? Uh, it's, it's super tiny. You can have, don't have 11, su 11 super tiny dents. <laughs> Throw that battery away. <laughs> what if, and I don't know the answer to this, what if you have a dent that's greater than one millimeter but less than one and a half millimeter? And we're talking like a couple of hairs. What if you've got four of them but you started to drop it but you caught it? Is that battery okay? Yes. I think you're right. Yes, because you didn't actually drop it, didn't hit the floor. And so here's the rest of our uh, dents and dots. Can't have, uh, can't have it look, can't have your battery look like your dog chewed it. What, what are their, what's their policy on scratches? On scratches? I'm glad you asked, Mark. Scratches. You can take, you can tolerate a scratch as long as you can scratch it. You can like take your, you can take your thumbnail. You can go like this and. Urgh! 15 millimeters, five times, and that battery's perfectly, give me one of them batteries, I wanna see what that looks look like. I'm kind of interested, if I scratched one, two, three, four, five, that's acceptable, perfectly acceptable battery according to Apple, five, 15. I feel like some of those are a little longer than 15 millimeter. Well, how many are longer? Do I have any of them over 40? Uh, because I can, I, have two or, I can have two or less that are up to 40. Oh, uh, you got more than two that are between 30 and 40, I think. Uh, throw it away. Throw it away. Ah, what are you going to do? Throw it away. No, no, right. Does the same thing about scratch depth? Um, scratch depth. Uh, nope. You can have them so Unlimited. deep. Unlimited. <laughs> so deep. As long as the scratch is as long as is, it's short. Is, is shorter than forty millimeters, mm -hmm. you know, it can it could slice all the way through. So if you the, scratch with a razor blade. Scratch it with an exacto knife, you know, if you're just kind of like if you're if it's falling and you don't want to have to replace it, you just cut it, you know, with an exacto knife to kind of like skewer it, scratch it a little bit, then I think you'll be alright. Now this is a shocker to me. This is a shocker to me. What do you guys think? Swollen batteries. What will Apple say? Let's hear it from you, chat. What do you think the Apple certification is going to ask you to say for about swollen batteries? These things. That looks pretty scary. Look at that. It's tearing up these devices. They're going to say it can only happen if you used an aftermarket battery. They're not going to say that. They'll secretly think it, but they're not going to say that. So let's see what will they say dun, 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 dun. this is going to be the biggest shock out of apple this entire year they say bum, bum, dun, dun. hold on where's the part about the the 
Where's the part about the swollen battery? Did I miss it? Oh, come on. Here we go. When a device's enclosure is separated or is bulging or split apart, it may be due to an expanded or swollen battery. The device may even still turn on and it appear to work as expected. It's just screens lifted up because the battery is swollen. Guess what, guys? An expanded swollen battery is not, not a safety, perfectly safe. Those giant sandbag batteries that just, just like want to squish them like a caterpillar. You just want to take a bite out of them. Go ahead. Perfectly safe. Because an expanded swollen battery is not a safety concern. And they go on to elaborate. In case you might be thinking that a freaky looking exploded battery that looks like it's about to self-destruct, blasting your screen across the room. It's, nothing's wrong with that. Why would you even ask? It's totally fine. It uh, is just an old battery with very few charging cycles remaining. Swelling may indicate end of life, which is end of life, Mark, is a non-hazardous condition. Mm -hmm. Tell that to the people that are on morphine at the hospital <laughs> right now with cancer. The it's last fine. stage mm -hmm. of a lithium battery's life is the balloon stage. The balloon stage, where it is completely inert, non-hazardous. The, the battery is essentially dead and it has no energy left. I mean, they're going on and on. It's dead, has no energy. I feel like they're trying to dare me to bite it. In fact, <laughs> I would like to point out that now as an Apple certified technician, I stand by my battery video where I took one of these swollen batteries and I stabbed it with a soldering iron. Perfectly safe and in accordance with my Apple certification. Pro, pro, pro activity right there all right so then it continues on so let's go back to the spot where we left off where we can really drill down on this so what do we have so far so this video just to be clear is not entirely tongue-in-cheek I mean some, some things are surprising I probably would have thought on an Apple certification that if it said swollen battery is not safe I would have said yes and that would be wrong so on your Apple certification for real technicians we have to learn how to think like Apple technicians in the Apple view of safety. Apple view of safety, swollen battery is totally legit, but you gotta count those dings and scratches. All right, so what else was surprising in here? Let's see, and this stuff seems to be all common sense. So they have, you know, don't bite it, don't feed it to your dog, don't throw water on it, don't piss on it, you know. Do they, do they address the like ingesting parts of a battery? Nope, not a word in here about eating it. It's fine. Yeah, nothing. I mean, it seems pretty thorough. Nope. All right. Now, this was interesting because they want these batteries returned back to the mothership. So anything that you take out as an Apple certified technician, you know, you can't let Apple certified parts go into the wild. You know, God forbid they make their way into, you know, random people's devices. They can't have legit parts got to put the kibosh on that. So any part, a legit OEM part that comes out of an Apple certified repair has to go back to the mothership. You know, maybe they're going to recycle it. I don't know. Maybe they're going to do some kind of fault analysis. Maybe there's some good reasons there. I don't really know. But that includes the battery. So when you take out any battery, you got to send it back. And they make it clear that you got to ship or transport the battery in its original packaging bag it, properly package it, blah, 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 blah. And then it's funny that all of this, you know, stuff about don't drop it, don't look at it, you know, don't bite it. They're not really saying any of that. <laughs> but they're saying just shove it back in the original packaging and hand it to John from USPS and tell him to take it back to Cupertino. Like, it's just, it's like, does, what about him? Does he know that, you know, like it's, does he know even what's in there? Probably so. All right, so you got to follow all their rules to send it to send it back. Can't put it in an airplane. All right, what else? Here we go. Workstation requirements. Workstation requirements and personal protection are some of the main questions on the certification about battery safety. So let's be clear, and everybody should know, take away your real technician workstation. My real technician workstation has got some q-tips a whole bunch of chips i got some freeze spray a lot of rubber bands a couple of diet cooks 
Were those ESD safe rubber bands? Yep, and ESD safe diet cokes. The only kind I drink. <laughs> it's completely filtered from any kind of uh, ion generating substances. All right, in the Apple certification workstation where you're going to be doing these repairs. Number one, it cannot be customer facing. So if you're used to doing battery swaps like me in front of the customer while we chat, while they get to see the inside of their device, where they get to have the joy of watching, will the pool tab break or not? You know, that's a, that's, that's a experience and they like that. And it's, and it's safe in a sensible, practical way. If I'm going to have to shove tools in there to, to, to sensibly handle a pry tab is pulled situation, then I would probably take it in the back. But when you're just doing a, a straight up, you know, pulling out the pull tabs on a battery, it's about the same amount of risk as far as I'm concerned as, as you know, taking a, a, one of those Phillips strips. What are those things called? Those little strips that you can hang stuff in your dorm room without tearing up your drywall, which is basically the Slide same paper? thing. No. That's what I used. Kind of like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it works out so you get posters stuck on the wall with flypaper? Yeah, that stuff's really sticky. Pro tip. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stick a battery in with some flypaper then, see what happens, see if anybody notices. All right, you're not allowed to work customer facing at all. You got to take it to the back. Mark, guess what the name of the area is where the Apple certified technician is supposed to do all this mysterious battery work? Um. Oz, no. The, no, I got nothing. It is the genius room. So you gotta, you can't work at the genius bar. It's for the customers, you gotta go to the genius room. I wanna go to the genius room and see what it's like. <laughs> but in the genius room, they're gonna have ESD safe, non-flammable workbenches. Now I've always wondered what's the difference between non-flammable and inflammable? Um, like that's, that's like, you know, like in, inflammable. <laughs> Yeah. In inflammable? I learned that inflammable and flammable mean the same thing the hard way. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that a story for now or is that, that a story, story for later? For later. <laughs> That's a story for later. All right. So you're going to take your, I, I think you should do away with both words and say ESD safe and, uh, you know, fire resistant or flame retardant uh, bench. All right. Now here's the thing. You've got to be at least two feet away from paper and combustible materials. So no paper around. Well, that makes sense. You know, if the battery does catch on fire, no paper, no problem. Mm -hmm. So no paper, got to be a paperless office, reasonable. And then you got to be within 20 feet of the yellow fire cabinet where you can shove the burning iPad air and shut the door on it real quick. Mm -hmm. Not that I would ever have any experience with that. And you've got to have a, um, appropriate fire extinguisher. Our fire extinguisher is this one. <laughs> and as far as real technicians, it's totally appropriate. I hope it stops fires. I don't really know. I've never had occasion to use it. Then you got to have the big one. This is my pro tip for you guys taking the certification. All answers. If you see the word sand, pick it. That's the right choice. They are so big on sand. Batteries, go in sand. If you got anything wrong with your battery, stick it in some sand. If your battery's on fire, put it in some sand. If you're building a workstation, you need to get some, get a giant sandbox. So do we, we do we have ours in a quick pour container? Yes, we did. I guess that would pour pretty quickly. A wide mouth, quick pour container. Sand. You need to have sand, lots of sand, for your safe workstation. You need to have specifically. You're looking for that apple phrasing. Eight to ten cups of clean, untreated. Filtered sand. Dry. Dry. Does it say dry? It says it right there. Dry, clean, dry. I was just going from memory. It's just so second nature. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it does say dry. In a quick pour container with a wide mouth, and it's got to be within our. So, do you think that these these are like open top cups of sand that are? It's on a fire. It's a <laughs> yeah. No, it's flip top. If you read the details, it'll tell you okay. flip a flip, and then you get to do some drills. Like so, our new fire drill would be like battery fire, <laughs> sand. I I would like to see some statistics on how many genius rooms have burns on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see that as well. 
All of them. <laughs> if there's real technicians working there. I'm betting more than half if they've been open for three years or more. That's right. I, I, I bet you're right. Unless there's like sort of like the secret army of the guy who's like, you saw nothing. <laughs> you know, and then they like, why is that uh, corner of the floor dark blue and the rest is gray? Don't worry about it. <laughs> they have another room with a stack of new tiles. Right, exactly. All right, so then you're supposed to keep all your paper away in case you couldn't. You know, this is for like the, the real dummies. Like, too much to read there. Uh, don't let paper burn up. Okay. And then, and then the other things that they choose to break out for like the, the people that are just skimming. Brant, brant, the giant in red. Always wear safety glasses when performing repair, not just battery, repair work. Mm -hmm. So we need to get some glasses up in here. So your workstation should be free of combustible materials. Yes. Does it address where you should keep your scotch? <laughs> in the yellow cabinet. <laughs> no, it said you can't put combustible materials in the yellow cabinet specifically. Oh, the green cabinet. I meant the green right, that's next to it. All right, so now, now we're going to move on to personal protection. Personal protection, I saw a lot of questions. And what I really remember when I took the, the test was this troll, where if, you're, if you have to kind of put yourself in the mindset of a test writer, how would you be able to trick people up on this relatively easy stuff? I mean, I think it would be difficult to make challenging battery questions because they're all going to be like, uh, what should you do with a battery? Should you take a bite out of it or should you put it in sand and then put it in the yellow? I mean, it's going to be pretty obvious. This, this stuff, is, this stuff is, is not difficult to guess. However, here's one where as a test writer, as a former professor, I can see what they would do. So we've got this list of personal protection, the nitrile latex gloves, the heat resistant gloves, which seems a little redundant. So if you're, I mean, if you're doing, are you really supposed to put on heat resistant gloves? Like you're gonna, you know, honey, give me another log for the wood stove. Yeah. Like All right, and now I'm gonna, oh, didn't you need me to change your battery? You get, you change the battery Although, with your oven. That's why you gotta do it with two hands. Yeah. Because you're wearing giant gloves. Yeah. So it's a little odd to me. They've got the two choices of gloves. But here's the thing. The troll that I remember is that they have this cut resistant gloves. And then it sits right here. Although it's not specific to battery safety, they should be stored in the safety kit for handling things like broken glass. So cut resistant gloves is in this battery safety section, but they're clear. Don't have anything to do with battery safety. You can go ahead and wear cut promoting gloves for handling batteries. It doesn't matter. The cut resistant gloves are for glass. So I think they'll say which of the following is not personal protection for battery safety. And the answer is going to be cut resistant gloves. So that's going to be for glass. So look out for that. I think they're going to use that as a way to try to get somebody to, to miss out on some of these questions. All right. So you've got to have your safety glasses, your heat resistant gloves, your nitrile gloves, and then the wrong gloves, cut resistant gloves. And then you got to have your cleaning wipes. You know what those are for? Um, obviously for cleaning your safety gloves. Right, so that you can see if there's like a little piece of paper encroaching in your two-foot radius <laughs> and you get, ba get banish it or something like that. Required materials. What is it? Eight to ten cups of clean, dry, beautiful, sweet-smelling Florida beach-scented sand in a quick pour dispenser. You never know. <laughs> and you might have to pour out some sand all over your floor. Hand broom with a dustpan. Better be a large dustpan capable of accommodating 10 cups of sand on the floor. <laughs> and you got to have some other pads in your yellow cabinet. All right, what else? Uh, let's see. Special tools are required. Read about that later. And then there's got all this stuff about covers. So this section here, protect the exposed cells of embedded batteries at all times. The entire attitude of this, this mindset is that a battery like this, this is an exposed cell of a battery. It's like this is a liver transplant that, you know, is going to just degrade if sunlight hits it. So it's, you know, you've got to cover it. Mm -hmm. You know, just like the light of the room, just your breath will kill the battery. It's so fragile. It's just ridiculous. All right, just common sense stuff for the most part with a healthy splash of fear mongering. I like that, yes. And so 
there's all this cover stuff. So you're going to see a lot of questions about, you know, correcting battery cover, blah, blah. So when they come, the batteries are shipped from the mothership to the outpost. They come with this cover. You're supposed to save it, put the dead battery back in there with the cover. And so these covers are uh, supposed to be protecting these batteries at all times from probably just from your mind, your mental you attitude, from your looks. disgust, <laughs> from, your, from your just... You know, like your your propensity to throw up from having to to work in this in this atmosphere. All right, what should you do if the correct cover is not available, and you just got it like hanging out like this? Maybe you even get scratched right now. Get get something you can kind of use to to smash it into the one that. Like, you know, just like take something else to be the cover. Oh, yeah, get a cover for a different no. battery and, and no. smush it in there. No, as best that's you can. that's too practical. You can't do that. Nope. <laughs> if you don't have the cover, there's only one thing to do: stop the repair. Stop the repair and order a replacement battery well, cover. Where do you? How do you protect the battery while you're waiting on the replacement cover? Sand. Duh. <laughs> Protected. And now you go out to the. I'm gonna have you go out and tell that tell that lady out front. I'm sorry, can't. I know that we said we could change your battery in 15 minutes. I know that you've got all of your calendar and your alarm and everything on that phone. I'm sorry. We lost the replacement cover that we need to carry it around when we're using two hands and our heat resistant gloves. It's missing. So I'm sorry. We're gonna have to stop the repair and. Replace your your whole phone. We throw your phone away. It's just not safe. We can't handle it. When to remove the battery cover? I don't think you should ever remove it. I think you should replace the batteries with your mind without ever... I don't think you should do it. That's dangerous. Only remove the battery cover immediately before installing that entire bottom case. Bramp, bramp. Inspect it for damage and debris. Dents. Mm -hmm. Get your dent counter. And we need some kind of like a little flashcard or a mnemonic. How are we going to remember all those dent size and allowable dent density? Allowable dent density and diameter. Oh That's God. tough. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Good news. Apple is a green company. Battery covers. Not the batteries. The covers can be reused as long as you get them a good cleaning. So no dust. Don't get any of that sand in them. Don't get any sand in it. No dust. No paper. You know, no polyester, none of that. All right, now you need to make sure you got plenty of lights. And now, inspection instructions. Now think about it, you're on the test. Which of the following? Which of the following is not an Apple certification for battery safety? Sufficient lighting? That is a certification standard. Viewing the battery from about one foot away. I would have said that was. A, I would have said that's dumb and no, I uh, would be wrong. So if you want to be certified, if you want to be an Apple certified technician like me, and like Mark here, you need to know these things. I lost my battery. I'm gonna dig it out of my sand. Ah, it's sandy. It's sand all over me. Oh, like a, there's like a there's some chicken little wings pull, in that pull, sand. Pull toy in there or something. <laughs> I think there's a mole crab. All right. Now, you demonstrate the proper procedure for viewing a battery on your dent check. <laughs> One foot away. <laughs> Wait, I, I went in my phone. I want to take a picture. <laughs> I want to take a picture from the. I want to take a picture and I want to put it in the study guide. Proper procedure. One foot away. This is that's no. not gonna work. <laughs> and this. Whoa! Oh, no, no, no. Oh God! That means if you're over forty-five, you just can't work at Apple. <laughs> well, yeah. It's like, kind let of, me see for this for dents. <laughs> that's part of what this is: is to you know keep out the undesirables. The undesirables makes sense. <laughs> you just really have no business to exercise special care to avoid accidental damage to the cell packs during this incredibly dangerous monstrously dangerous period of time when the cell pack is not covered. Just for that brief period where you peek out from behind the gloves and the safety glasses for one foot away to look for your dents, to do your dent density and depth. Inspecting check. a battery improperly could be the last thing you ever do. 
as an Apple certified technician, right? So we already covered our dents, and we already covered our scratches, and we already said, <laughs> that's what's mind boggling to me that so much of this is, you know what happens if you pull your battery pry tab, throw that, I mean it says, throw that phone away, where, where is that part? Uh, never attempt to separate or remove the battery from the case assembly, never. Don't do any long screw damage either. Do not ever reuse or reinstall a loose battery. This, throw it away. It's loose. It's not covered. It's not cradled. Mm. Piece of crap. Replace it with a new battery. Or, what if you don't have a new battery? What should you do, Mark? Uh, replace the entire device. Replace the whole unit. If you don't have a battery, that's it. I don't have any. I'm out of, I'm out of 6S plus. Oh, well, you get a new phone. Well, I, I do think here they're talking about the case and battery MacBook thing. And really? Where it says iOS devices? <laughs> oh, think wow. iOS devices. Wow. Do a not reinstall a loose battery. You know how dangerous this is. I'm only holding it with one hand. It's crazy. Oh, God. It's been compromised. It's been com I mean, this thing, this thing is... I mean, it's a miracle we're not dead. I mean, thank God for the sand. Otherwise, whew. yeah. If you if you dropped your last 6S battery while the lady is waiting out front for the battery replacement that you're not allowed to do in front of her, so she doesn't see you with your safety glasses and your oven mitts. Oh, dropping the battery, or you take it out of the pack. It's got seven dents in it. No go. Sand. Yep. You have to replace the whole unit. Replace the whole unit. Now, what do you do, Mark, if you're in the middle of a very careful, very tedious battery strip removal? Of course, your new battery is covered. You've already inspected it. It's ready to go. And the most earth-shattering, awful thing that could ever happen to any person ever happens to you. That pull tab breaks. Oh. What do you do? It's the worst. It is. Um, what do I do, or what, what does should a, you well, do? Well, what does a real technician do? Um, you uh, you get in there with a plastic tool, with something very thin that can get up under the edge. And you get get a little bit more of that. Yeah, that's that what pull I pull tape in you. That's pull. what I said. I said you use a sensible tool. Here we go. Real technicians will safely handle torn battery pull tabs by prying with sensible tools. Right? You're just going to use common sense and pull that battery out of there. Yeah, but then you're breaking one of those fundamental do not torque twist. Yeah, you sure are. That's mm -hmm. why. That's why. If such a terrible, terrible moment should befall you, you're going to stand up, you're going to take that battery, put it in sand. You're gonna, after covering it, of course, I mean, you're not an idiot. You're gonna walk out to the front and you're gonna tell poor Mrs. Johnson, I'm sorry, I gotta take your phone and throw it away. All of your data, I hope it's backed up. No, I can't just put in some other battery just to get your backup, I'm sorry. I broke the pool tab trying to change your battery and now that phone has gotta go in the trash. So this is not safe. What do you think that Apple does with all of these? Because you know that they're breaking pull tabs all the time. So what do you think that they do with those housings with the battery stuck in that no one in the U.S. is allowed? I think that what happens is that they go to the Secret Service Center that none of us are allowed to even know about where they have a different manual that's like security clearance level two. <laughs> OT3. All right. Guys, I'm gonna, give you, I'm gonna give you a clearance here to know the secret protein. Go put a little alcohol, <laughs> loosen up that adhesive, and then we're gonna go in, put the full body suit on, and we're gonna go into the fume hood. Only single people with no children or wives are allowed to even have this job. <laughs> And then they're gonna take a plastic spudger and they're gonna lift it up and they're gonna they're gonna rescue it. That's what I think is happening. I think they send them to their places in China 
And then just sort of like, oh, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> what airplane <laughs> is stuffed to the gills? Oh, no, with, they go on boats. boats. They go on oh, boats. Oh, they go on boats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This just in. Boat sank <laughs> full of half chewed up batteries from, from geniuses all over the world that were like, sorry, nothing you can do. All right. So if you, even if the pull tabs come up successfully, Mark, and then you go to like kind of lift the battery up, but it's like kind of stuck a little bit, just a little, a mm -hmm. little bit of goo, a little bit adhesive. Stop. Throw that phone away. And replace. Uh, here's put it back together. Reinstall the display assembly and replace the whole unit. Now That's what, it. New phone. I'm having a hard time here with the. Who pays for that? The package that it came in, the new one? Yes. Is, is that not a loose battery no, at that point? No, Mark. God, Mark, you're going to fail. It's covered. It's in a tray with a cover on it. That's not loose. Oh. It's like a little, like, cookie tray. You know? <laughs> it's like you're, you're going to put the whole thing on, on this, and then that thing's going to get a cover like so this. Then you so just like it's on the phone, just and then like, like it's made out off. of... You know, radioactive cobalt, you know, like. <laughs> and that's probably why you got to, like, hold it with two hands. Because the whole, the, whole, the whole thing is, like, <laughs> is, is probably this big. <laughs> yeah, 15 pounds. Yeah. So, and then if your battery, God forbid, you only have one in stock. Because if it's your last one, you're out. Replace the whole phone. If that battery is dented, punctured, punctured, you're dead, right? Swollen, damaged, blah, blah, blah. Do not remove that battery. Even if there's, it told you there's nothing wrong with it. It's just swollen. Reassemble. Replace the whole unit. There you go. Yeah, see, here you go. Here's your outer cardboard box, your inner cardboard box, and ESD and yellow label. Service packs. I like this one. The stuff that we gotta we gotta write down. <laughs> well, I'll be clear. Nowhere in this entire document does it tell me not to eat it. It does not say <laughs> do not ingest the battery. It doesn't say don't lick it. It doesn't even say it does, doesn't say don't huff it. It it doesn't say any of that. So I I really get bothered by these kind of industrial documents when they when they say things like you're so dumb that we need to tell you. Not to staple that battery in there good with staples. Don't staple a battery. You you're so, you're so, you're so dumb. Obviously. I guess they must. For what? Like, what do you staple? Not paper. There's none of that. <laughs> right. I, mean, I have no idea. Where would they have Probably punishment. Put your thumb out. <laughs> I saw you walk in with that battery in one hand. Boom. <laughs> that makes 10 this week, Mark. <laughs> That'll warn oh, you. Man, I would not last very long. Yeah, so it just, I, I just drives me crazy when when you see a line like this where it's like, don't use staples and <laughs> don't buy crack on the way home. You know, like it's just just ridiculous stuff. All right, don't forget about the battery covers, et cetera, et cetera. Here's your first aid stuff. Now, this is funny. Like, I was really interested to know, what are they going to tell me to do? Like, where's the stuff where it says, you know, all right, this is this is the super safe Apple maximum safety response to bad stuff. And here's what they say. They say, raise an in-store safety incident. <laughs> Go up to the front. Days without incident. Put a big zero. <laughs> Hang your head in shame. <laughs> Notify management. Complete an injury report. So paperwork. Step one, do paperwork. <laughs> if there has been smoke from a thermal runaway. If a battery is on fire, it's in the sand, burning up, smoke everywhere. What should you do, Mark? Try and paperwork. Huff as much of it as you can. You got it first. First, you're gonna do your first aid, and then you're gonna do some paperwork. Now, what if it smells a little bit like juicy fruit? What should you do? Go outside sniff. and go to the doctor. Sniff deeper. Nope, that's not what it says. Now, if the battery seared itself into your unprotected skin right above the tops of your heat-resistant gloves and right below your safety glasses, strip, get naked. Okay. I'm not sure that's sensitive. 
and put some cool running water in the bathroom sink. <laughs> what about the eye wash station? <laughs> this place is a joke. There's no dedicated safety zone. What kind of safety? Do you think you call yourself safe? And then go to the doctor. And that's it. Like that. That that's kind of that's kind of it. So. I'm still waiting for it to tell me, you know, what do I do when the thing catches on fire? And it doesn't. It never does. It, it never does say anything other than I, it never tells you. In the event that this thing catches on fire through, despite all of our massive safety precautions, uh, throw it in the sand. So, it just tells you if that happens, don't send it back to us. We do not want your caught on fire battery, blah, 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 blah. So you got to do all these special disposal things and having completed the course, all right, Mark, are you able to do these? This is your test. Ready? Mm -hmm. Can you explain the importance of exercising special care when handling lithium ion slash polymer batteries? Yes. It's very important. Okay, that, that's it? That's, that's, that's my it. explanation of the importance. Very. Very. <laughs> Dem can you demonstrate the proper and safe handling of batteries and a portable computer case assemblies with a built-in battery? Watch out for the sand. It's very sandy. Yeah. And, and the, the covers. And, oh, there's that's paper. My demonstration. There's paper. Papers right there. It's too close to the paper. Now watch that paper. Well, minus one for the proximity <laughs> to paper on that. Uh, do you recognize and identify signs and symptoms of damaged batteries? What are the signs and symptoms of damaged batteries? Would it be a three minute reboot? <laughs> 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 Would it be acts like Tigris is bad? Uh, that's it's gonna be dents, dings, scratches. Um, uh, and what about swollen batteries? Uh, swollen batteries, um, look for uh, charred husks of what used to be a battery. Charred husks <laughs> of what used to be a battery. Check for, um, check the things in the sand for the last <laughs> guy. That's, that's a, a, and can you respond to events involving various battery and portable computer case assemblies with built-in battery? Respond to events involving various battery. Well, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, give me an event. I'll respond to it. You should be able to respond to events involving various battery assemblies with built-in batteries. Respond to events? Like what? Yeah. You're like, ah, I'm having a giant battery party. Yeah. Liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, res respond, I'll be there, bro. respond to events. You're like, nah, I'm tired. <laughs> this concludes the embedded battery safety for retail course. Very good, and that's the so, end. Yeah, bunch so, of yeah. obvious stuff, and then like the random Easter egg. Yeah, a couple of things. I think you're going to be cool <laughs> if you just go. Uh, so this is short now, the, what we have so far. But I do want to check in with chat, see if chat, did we miss anything? So it says okay. that uh, you're, you know, pretty much I distilled it all to the one pro tip at the top. Pro tip. You don't have the time. When you're reading a question, just replace the word battery with the phrase bomb about to detonate for every question and you should be fine. If you have a bomb about to detonate, how many dings and scratches are okay? Not very many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you have a bomb about to detonate, how should you carry it? Well, two hands. <laughs> if you have a bomb about to detonate, what should you do if you don't have a cover? Put it down and leave. You know, like, yeah. like, yep. like, pretty then you'll, you'll, I think you'll be fine. None of the rest of this is even necessary. And then there's a couple other things. If you're a real technician, you know, you might not realize that you have to do things like replace the whole phone if you break the battery pull tab or have the slightest bit of resistance when you don't break the battery pull tab. Can't work at the front counter and you got to do the two hands thing. You got to replace a battery that has been dropped. Don't walk around with loose batteries. Treat them like bombs. Protective covers all over the place. Your safety is first, inspect the battery from one foot away, and then the workstation rules. This is where they're going to ask a lot of questions. No paper within two feet, got to get close to the fire extinguisher, 20 feet. I think they're going to pick these numbers kind of questions. Eight to ten cups of sand, 
recipe for a good workstation requires eight to ten cups of eight sand. of clean, untreated, Florida yeah. fresh sand. Always wear safety glasses. The glove thing, the cut resistant gloves, I think they're going to troll on this cleaning wipe safety glasses and the two different types of gloves. You got to memorize this. This is the one thing that you that you probably should know the 10, 6, or 3. Forget about all of the actual, like, is it a pea or a corn or a grain of wipes? Forget it. Just know that your answer choices are going to be 10 or less, 6 or less, or 3 or less, and kind of match them up so that the sizes match how many of them that you can have. And then. Swollen batteries, no problem. So if you see that word swollen, it's probably a troll. It probably means you're meant to say, not a safety concern, just end of life. You should go to the doctor. Don't mail back torn up batteries to Apple. They don't want them. And that's it. So this is part of the SVC19A, which is the Apple Service Fundamental Cer Certification. Costs 20 bucks to take it. You can go to iPadRehab.com and click on our other blog about why we became Apple certified. And I do think that this is silly and it's fun, um, but I think it's important. I think it's important for you to be able to tell people. You know, we had a, a case where somebody said, oh, that phone wasn't like a damaged when I sent it. Hell, if it wasn't, I'm an Apple certified technician and damn sure was liquid damage. You know, it's that kind of stuff is uh, kind of, it does have sort of an extra bit of sway because regardless of whether or not it makes sense, which clearly it doesn't, the public has yet to realize how, you know, kind of ridiculous these Apple certifications are. And just the fact that anybody can read this silliness and, and then pretty readily pass the exam. So you should do it. We should all become Apple certified because I think where the right to repair stuff is headed, I think that we're going to need as independent repair shops, mom and pop shops, people that are just wanting to fix their devices, we're gonna have a tough time getting access to fair parts and information if Apple just makes a deal with the largest organization around. So it seems like we all have fair access to parts. I think this Apple certification is a small thing that we could do to try and petition Apple. Hey, I'm Apple certified and I want fair access to parts. So that's, um, that's, that's my idea. And I think that we should all give it a shot. In the very least, I think it helps you with your, your public presentation in your town. You're Apple certified and you're doing unauthorized repair. Which as long as you're really clear about that, then we'll see whether or not Apple has a problem. Do we, uh, do we, do we talk to Apple to see if we can get any like kickbacks for people who sign up? Use yeah, Apple, code Apple. Rehab. yeah, use promo code <laughs> iPad Rehab. For, for every one person that signs up, Tim Cook will allow me to handle a battery with one hand one time. Now I did want to ask, <laughs> one time, <laughs> did want to ask chat um, what maybe I should put on my uh, my Apple Care certification that I am um, oh, I, I get to I get to already. to type this out. So it says I love this. I mean I love like so far I've said hey I want my certificate and they were like okay uh, sure send us your your tech ID okay here's your link and so today I got the email that's like here's the beautiful certificate link fill this out exactly how you want it to appear Jessa on your Apple certified certificate. So I said okay. Enter full name exactly as you would like to appear. Uh, Jessa Jones, VP of Safety. Yep. That was Mark's <laughs> idea. Um, what else? There's some other ideas. And then my company, iPad Rehab, Apple Unauthorized Service Provider. I would like to just say that and be, be crystal clear. Now, I think from having written our, our, our blog here, where we would really like to just tell people have a little quick study guide that will probably help them get through these questions because you have to pass all of the battery safety ones. You kind of have to know that one in a little bit more detail. As we see Apple's white knuckled approach to battery safety, put that in the context of how they designed iOS to respond to an unknown battery being in the phone. I mean, they, they are extremely extremely jumping over the fence to our side to say, hey, we are not gonna self-destruct this phone. We're not gonna turn it off. If we don't detect 
the right battery, that's fine. It's your risk. Use it. I mean, this is so out of character for them. They are so crazy with what they perceive as safety. I mean, this is ridiculous. But they think this is what safety means. And the idea that from that mindset, they said, you know what we're going to do with iOS? We're going to make it say, don't, you know, that, hey, you don't see the normal battery we're expecting. Uh, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Should we self-destruct? Should we jump it into sand? Should we just, you know, make it package itself up with a battery cover and fly it to the mothership? No. We're going to let you use it. No problem. No question asked. The only thing we're going to do is just notify you, hey, this battery, we're not going to vouch for this battery. We don't want to have anything to do with that battery. We can't count the dents on that battery. We don't know if it's been dropped. We don't know if it's been punctured or twisted or stepped on or penetrated or any of those other we can't see it we don't want to have anything to do with it and we definitely don't want to have ios say battery health 100 percent for your janky ass battery that you found on the side of the road it's amazing that they're that they gave sort of no flack about just using it that's fantastic good job apple i'm proud of you Good job, Apple, and if you want us to buy Apple batteries and do this crazy nonsense, that's fine. You're a business. I don't have anything wrong with that. It's not your job to make it easy for me to sell batteries. But you're doing what I think is totally reasonable. You're notifying people it's not the authorized battery, and you are just letting the device go on as normal. So there, there we go. Anything on chat that we need to... Where is the video with a punctured, swollen battery? It's on the channel. I'll see if I can find it and put it in the comments. Pneumatic stapler from Uline. She'll get the job done. All right. That's what we have to say. I want to see your certifications. So tell us. Comment below. When you get Apple certified, show me your certificate. Can't wait to see it.